Hello, everyone. This is Stephen Massa with the Water Environment Federation. I want to welcome each of you to the Like a Rock or Like a Flock e-showcase presented by Avaqua Water Technologies. Before we begin, I would like to quickly review a few logistics. During this webcast, while you cannot speak directly to the presenters, you will have an opportunity to submit questions by typing your specific question into the GoToWebinar pane that appears on the right-hand side of the computer screen. We will be accumulating questions and directing them to the presenters at the end. The PDF PowerPoint presentations are now available for downloading at WEF's website and are currently available in the handouts pane of the GoToWebinar panel. This link was included in the GoToWebinar reminder email sent an hour before the webcast and will be included in the follow-up email sent 24 hours after the webcast has ended. We will be recording this e-showcase. The recording link will be available on the webcast website 24 hours after the webcast has ended, and that link will also be included in the follow-up email sent 24 hours after the webcast has ended. PDH credits are not available for this event. Please note that today's event is an e-showcase and does not necessarily reflect the views of the Water Environment Federation. If you have any additional questions after the webcast has ended, please email webcasts at wef.org. Today's speakers are Sergio Pino Yelchik and Casey Whittier. Sergio is the Technological Sales Manager for Biological Process Equipment at Evoqua, and Casey is the Global Product Manager for Ballasted Settling Technologies. Sergio, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, everybody, for joining uh, this webinar today. Today, we're going to talk about ballasted activator sludge. Um, we will see how a simple enhancement can expand the possibilities of the traditional secondary treatment that we are all familiar with to get more treatment, more capacity, better effluent quality out of secondary clarifiers. We do this by addressing what we think is the main limiting factor of secondary treatment. That is the settling rate of mixed liquor or biological flux. So we named this presentation like a rock or like a flock in reference to the settling rate that we'll be addressing today. So I'm going to start with the problem, the challenge. As I said, the limiting factor for us from a treatment perspective are the secondary clarifiers. We as an industry have developed sophisticated biological treatment to remove nitrogen and phosphorus. But when we get to the secondary clarifiers, we rely on mixed liquid biological flux that have a specific gravity just slightly above one. So they are just slightly above, you know, heavier than water. As a result, they need quiescent conditions. Typically, secondary clarifiers are the largest unit operation in a treatment plant, and they don't provide all the process resilience that we want. So you can have a picture like this with a clarifier after a, a rain event or with poor SVI that will put you always on the limited in terms of operating those clarifiers. So the question for today is, what if we could increase the specific gravity of flux? We would address this topic with a technology called Biomax that we will be discovered during the presentation. So let's start with a video, show, hopefully it shows well on your screen. It's a uh, simple side-by-side -side settling test. On your left, you have conventional mixed liquor, in this case with a poor SVI, about 200. On your right, is ballasted mixed liquor with the intent to increase the settling rate of those biological flux. I want to speed up the stopwatch now. So there you have it. In a fraction of time, the ballasted mixed liquor sample settled faster, but also better, leaving behind a clear supernatant. That is your secondary effluent. So this is the fundamental aspect that we want to address in today's webinar. Through the Biomax technology developed in the U.S. around 2005, we will see the new opportunities that brings to the industry to get more clarifier capacity, better effluent quality, moving the needle, adding more bandwidth to run the clarifier with a higher loading rate. At the same time, we will see the opportunities to get more out of the biological treatment, as now we can carry higher biological mixed legal concentration for more treatment. So the idea for us today is to share the development of the technology, performance data, and the opportunities that certainly brings to the industry. So the fundamental actor of Biomax is to really have the ability to balance 
conventional biological flux. You see on the screen here a typical picture that most likely we're familiar with, microscopic picture of a biological flux. When we balance the biological flux, we add fine particles of a mineral called magnetite. It's mine, iron, ore. We will discover certain properties that make it ideal as a ballast material for our industry. Before doing that, I want to keep talking about the value that Biomag can bring to a project. So from these microscopic pictures, I want to take you to a full-scale plan to see what are the benefits that Biomag can bring for a plant expansion or upgrade. This is a real case that we're presenting here. It's a plant in Virginia. We're completing the, the commissioning phase. So this plant here uh, was facing two things. Number one, about 50% capacity increase and also very stringent nutrient limit. Total nitrogen less than three milligrams per liter and total phosphorus less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So the concept design, the original concept design you can see here uh, on your screen included adding more bioreactor, as we need to carry now more mixed liquid to adjust for capacity and the SRT for nutrient. That original concept design also considered more secondary, secondary clarifiers and also the addition of new tertiary filters. So as you can see, it was certainly you know, a large upgrade in terms of infrastructure, very costly. There are also new buildings more there that, that they needed anyway. So that's it again, the concept is the conventional approach for this uh, upgrade and expansion. When we applied Biomag to this plant, we took advantage of all the process intensification that we can get out of the enhanced ballasted mixed liquid. Number one, now we can carry higher mixed liquid in the ration basin that allow us to reduce the new bioreactor volume significantly compared to the original concept design. We designed this plant to run about 7,000 milligrams per liter of mixed liquid. Second, because now I can move the needle, adding more bandwidth to put your secondary clarifiers, we only added 50% of the foreseen new clarifiers. And the third aspect is that there was no need to add tertiary filters, as the quality of the secondary effluent it was superior, and there was no need to, to add filters. So again, this is the concept of Biomax, is process intensification, carrying more biological mixed liquor, pushing those clarifiers, moving the needle to operate them safely uh, with a higher loading rate and producing a pristine effluent quality out of a clarifier without the need for, for, for filters. The beauty of the technology is that it's very versatile. We have been applying this technology over 10 years with different process configurations. So we can apply Biomag to virtually any type of accurate storage system that you can imagine. As you see in the screen, we have conventional references, high rate, oxidation ditches, multi-stage BNR and SBR. Very, very versatile. How do we apply this in a treatment plant? So let's just start with a generic schematic that most likely we're all familiar with, with an aeration basin followed by secondary clarifiers the return activated sludge, and your waste activated sludge. So how we incorporate Biomag into the system? As I mentioned before, the fundamental aspect that we want to accomplish is to balance the mixed liquid. So we bring magnetite, these fine particles of iron ore, to increase the settling rate of those biological flux that settles very slowly. By doing that, I can move the needle on the loading rate of the clarifiers, increasing the surface overflow rate and the solid loading rate. So again, we can push those clarifiers to operate at a higher rate. At the same time, we can generate better effluent quality, similar to tertiary filtration. With the clarifiers operating at a higher rate, now give me opportunities to run the biological treatment with higher biological mixed lead. We have plants running the 8,000 up to 10,000 milligrams per liter and still setting very well on those secondary clarifiers. So again, it's pure intensification, maximum mixed liquid in the duration basing, and moving the needle to get the secondary clarifiers to run better and with a higher loading rate. So where is the biomag equipment here? Well, it's a side stream position. As we generate watt, 
due to the biological process, that waste actually so that has some magnetite that we don't want to waste. We want to recover it and send it back to the system. So we adapted our equipment through the, through the mining industry and developed a magnetite recovery system. So we send that wax that has magnetite through a recovery system that Casey will describe later through the, the webinar. We recover most of that magnetite and we put it in a small blending tank bringing some of the rust to help us to hydraulically convey that uh, recovered magnetite. In that blending tank, we also add some virgin magnetite to compensate the losses. We can recover about 95% of the magnetite. All that gets recycled back to the system. So very sustainable, we can recover again the majority of the magnetite that gets recycled, and we can get the intensification aspect of the secondary treatment to get more out of small treatment volume existing infrastructure. So with this, I want to try to dive in into the engine of the process, magnetite. Magnetite is really what drives the process enhancement to have settling rates that are superior compared to conventional treatment. So let's talk about magnetite. Magnetite is a mineral, it's an iron ore, it's traded globally in massive amounts, it's mostly used in the steel and coal industry. It's really available, it's dense, it has a very high specific gravity, so it really helps us to bring down those biological flux, especially those with poor SBIs. Magnetite has a few key properties that make it ideal for our industry as a badass material. Number one, it's hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. When you put it in contact with mixed liquor, it will find its way to bond very well with those biological flux, as you can see on those pictures. That gives us the ability to, bio, to balance either a chemical or biological flux, very versatile for different process schemes. Magnetite is full inert. We have NSF certification for drinking water application. That means that we have no impact on the biology in a secondary treatment. As a mineral, it's a commodity. It's very inexpensive. It's traded in millions of tons per year around the globe. So it's just about 30 cents, 40 cents per pound. It's sustainable. Casey will talk about how we recover not up to 95% of the magnetite in a very innovative way. The other key element about this ballast material is that we use very small particle size. As you can see on the screens, you know, on the pictures, magnetite particles get embedded and fused within those microscopic flux. We use about 10 to 40 microns particle size. So this is the end, you know, the, of the technology. This allows us to intensify a biological process with higher mixed liquor, more capacity in the clarifiers. I want to go now through to share some performance data with everybody. So the first case is stringent limit without filters. And again, the fundamental aspect here is a process intensification uh, that Biomac can bring to a, a project. As we intensify the biological process, the technology can free up tankage for more treatment volume, or can require a smaller treatment volumes in new facilities. We can accommodate longer SRTs, higher mixed liquid in existing tanks. In SBRs, we can accommodate longer react time. In terms of performance, effluent quality, out of secondary clarifiers, the technology can generate less than three milligrams per liter of solar nitrogen and less than 0.2 milligrams per liter of total phosphorus without clarifiers. Now, certainly, we need the proper biological configuration to get to those uh, low TN and TT limits. So certainly, you know, if you're looking at something in the less than five or three TN, you may need a four or five stage for them. For that level of fossil that low, we will also need probably a metal salt to co-precipitate co uh, in the ration based in phosphorus, alum, ferric chloride, we've had experience with all those uh, type of metal salt. So again, the, the benefit of biomass here is securing uh, and a pristine effluent quality with very, very low uh, particulate solid out of the secondary effluent, very low turbidity, and the ability to carry higher biological solid in the ration basin uh, to get more treatment. So I want to show you now four uh, case studies, very, very, uh, it's a summarized view of per performance data 
to share what we have done in the past uh, seven to eight years. The first plant is storage mass. Um, this is a plant that actually was the first biomass plant that started up in February 2011. The plant has three of these packaged donut shape that you can see in the picture uh, with the radiation basin in the outer channel and uh, the clarifier in the middle. The plant didn't have room to grow and we're facing a, a TN limit of 10. So what they had to do is to turn those uh, donut shaped plants into an MLE process and we were able to accommodate, to squeeze in an anoxy volume in that outer channel and rise the, the mix leak or up to 5,000 to get again the intensification concept, more treatment, and get the right configuration to address the TN limit of 10. As you can see in this performance data, it's more than six years of data. Uh, they have consistently been below their target uh, with an average TN of 4.6. This plant went even further and started bringing some septic uh, to the plant for a revenue stream and with a lot of ammonia. Even with that pressure, um, the system was able to respond well, uh, ensuring a good TN effluent quality out of the secondary clarifiers. The second plant I want to highlight today is Marlboro Easterly in Massachusetts, uh, phosphorus removal. This plant has a very low TP limit, less than 0.1, it's a seasonal limit. Um, and the plant has two stage active research process. The first stage with the radiation basin and clarifier take care of the BOD removal aspect. And the second stage where we have biomag installed, incorporated, take care of nitrification and phosphorus. So you can see on this graph here is historical data, more than two years of data of phosphorus concentration. In red, you can see the phosphorus concentration coming to the second stage from the first one. So we have biomag. On average, biomass was receiving about, let's say, 0.6 milligrams per liter of phosphorus. In that second stage, the plants are ferric chloride, and out of the secondary clarifier with biomass, consistently over time, this plant generated less than 0.1 milligrams per liter of total phosphorus. Um, they measure a 60-day uh, moving average and a monthly average, as you can see, uh, consistently since we brought up uh, uh, biomass online in early 2015, the plant has generated a low TB. And this is driven, as I said before, by the ability of the system to generate very low turbidity out of the clarifier. So all those phosphorus precipitate, colloidals, get in the system, uh, sweep down by the blanket, ensuring a very crystal clear effluent quality. Now let's move to another topic of application that I think is a challenge for us in the industry wet water flow management. We know that when it rains, it pools right now. So this is an interesting case, the Upper Winnet Township in Pennsylvania, running with Biomax since early 2014. The main challenge for this plant was the high peaking factors. As you can see on your left, the flow rate between 2014 and 2017 show a very high peaking factor with a max peak, uh, peak flow of 17 MGD, average of 2.5. But regardless of these uh, hydraulic surges that this plant was facing, the effluent TSS out of the secondary clarifier was pristine during, during this period of time. As you can see on this graph, again, it's a moving monthly average effluent TSS out of the secondary clarifier in a single digit with an average of less than 3.1. And lastly, something simple, I think it's another angle of the opportunity that we can get with Biomag process stability. The Allenstown New Hampshire plant gets a fleet of trucks with septics. It's a big revenue stream for them, but with a nasty impact on the SVIs. As you can see here in this graph, before Biomag, the SVI was about 200. Big challenge for the operators with shallow clarifiers. We brought Biomag online in 2011, and the SVI came down to about 70. So with that, we gave them bad wind to this utility to keep receiving that revenue stream to septic. So with that, I want to hand it over to uh, Casey Williams, who will go through the equipment of the Biomax technology. All right, thanks, Sergio. Uh, again, like, uh, like Sergio said, uh, 
Biomag, we're going to go into the details of what, what the system looks like when you add Biomag into your existing activated sludge process. So again, as Sergio showed this diagram before, what we're really going to focus in on here is that, that yellow stream there that shows our feed and recovery system, which is where we add the ballast material uh, to the process, but also recover it as, as we waste solids out of the process and, and, and put it back in. So. We're going to focus on what that equipment looks like, how we put it in, and uh, some of the details around it. So what we'll start with is, is construction of the system. Um, what we have here is uh, a few different sites on where we put in the feed and recovery equ equipment. Again, we're incorporating that into the plant's existing uh, waste system, waste activated sludge system. So in the first one on the upper left uh, is, is Upper Gwinnett Township. And in this case, that that feed and recovery equipment was all housed inside an existing uh, building that was already located on the plant. So we were able to to make some space in there that wasn't being used and incorporate that system right into a an existing structure on the site. Uh, on the on the right side at the top of the slide is is Marley Taylor. Um, this was a, a pretty comprehensive plant upgrade. Um, all around the plant. So in, the, in this instance, uh, as part of the upgrade project, they added a new uh, brick building that houses the recovery equipment. Uh, as you'll also see in that picture, uh, on the outside of the building is, a, what, uh, is our magnetite storage silo. So that's located outside on this and then is um, feeding the magnetite into some tanks inside the building. And then on the bottom is, is kind of a um, for East Norton is is a another building system that was the, put up as part of a new construction construction. But in this case, it was a more economical solution. Something that they were they got a prefabricated fiberglass building that was just put on a concrete pad. So pretty inexpensive way to to get that equipment housed on site. And again, uh, in this instance, there's also the feed silo located outside the building. So just, those are just some of the different ways that we've seen this get incorporated into a plant from an overall housing of the equipment that goes into it. And uh, now we'll move on and look at some of the details of what that equipment looks like. Uh, so we'll start with our magnetite feed systems. And essentially we have two automated type systems we can offer. The first, if you look on the left side of the screen is a bag feeding system. Uh, and generally, we'll use this type of system for smaller plants, generally less than one MGD. It's something, as we look at the magnetite usage for a given plant, we'll, uh, we'll decide between that type of system and, and then our larger one, which is on the right side of the system, uh, and that is our magnetite feed storage silo. That's a 25-ton silo, so it holds 25 tons of magnetite. And the reason that size is selected, um, if you see, uh, off to the right of that silo is the magnetite delivery truck. So these trucks come in and, and they hold 25 tons of load. Uh, so that, that silo provides the capacity for a full truck load uh, of magnetite. And that's, that's the most efficient way as far as, as sizing the silo. Uh, and you can see the truck just pulls in, uh, hooks up to the feed pipe, which is outside of the silo, and blows that full load into the silo. And then we meter it out over time. Uh, into the process as we need to make a magnetite. So those are our two basic type of feed systems we have with Biomag. And with that, we'll move over uh, into, start, into starting to look at the recovery process. And the first piece of equipment we're going to look at here really is, is the heart of the system. This is, this is what uh, the main driver on how we get that magnetite uh, recovered and, and put back into the process. Uh, before we look at that magnetite recovery gr drum in detail, I'm going to show a little video. I think this uh, really demonstrates the concept on, on how we get that magnetite back. And, and as you see in the beaker, we're just dropping a high-strength magnet into the beaker, and you can see the magnetite is, is highly attracted to that, so it's very magnetically retrievable. And that really lays out the concept of what the magnetite recovery drum is. This isn't a new piece of equipment. It's a piece of equipment that we've adapted for wastewater. It's been used for many years in the mining industry um, as, as a way to, to recover magnetite. So how the drum works, uh, if you look at the diagram on, on the slide here, we have our magnetic recovery drum. Uh, inside that drum, 
we have a stationary uh, array of, of magnets. So you can see uh, this is a cutout. The picture that just popped up is a cutout of what those magnetites look like inside the drum. That's covered then with an outer shell that rotates around that stationary array of magnets. Coming into the drum, we're feeding our, our ballasted waste. That flows underneath the drum. And the magnetite is, as that skin rotates around the drum, the magnetite is pulled and walked around the drum where then at the top you see the magnetic array ends. It then falls off and is scraped into a recovery chute and returned back to the process. That waste stream that first came in, now free of magnetite, uh, overflows out the, the other end of the drum and is sent on to your normal solids handling process for waste activated sludge. So that's the gist of how that, that drum really um, works and, and recovers and returns the magnetite back to the process. The next slide is just a little more detail on it. So we've got, you know, from single drum sites to multiple drums, and this just gives you a feel of how we might lay that, where we have multiple drums, how we might start laying them out in the building. So what you see uh, in the two pictures is an array of four drums. Um, and we have them facing each other, going discharging to a con common channel that then returns that to, to the ballast mix tank in the process. So as you get multiple drums, you can keep adding on a, a configuration similar to what you see in the picture here. Now the one, the next, the next thing we're going to cover is um, our shear mill. As, as Sergio showed you earlier, that magnetite really likes to embed in the flock and. And that's what allows us to get that rapid settling. Um, before we hit the magnetite recovery drum, we need to remove the magnetite back from the biological flock. And because that's embedded in there, what we do is send it through what we call our biomag shear mill. And an easy way to look at this is it's just an industrial sized type blender. So we run it through that mill and you can see in the picture, the mill is simply a fixed stator with a, a rotor that's that's actually shivved up to run faster than the motor does. Um, so it, it spins very rapidly and as that mixed liquor hits the, the blade, the, the, shear, the rotor chops it and also through collision puts it through the stator and that allows that magnetite to become separated from the biological flock. So that's, after that, that's where we're feeding the magnetic recovery drum. So we've got the mixed liquor then separated from the magnetite and it allows us to get largely just magnetite back to the process and get those waste solids out like they need to. And with that, that's the, that, those are the key components of our, our uh, feed and recovery system. Um, just to summarize on the presentation, again, to remember where we're applying Biomag. First one is definitely for applications where you're looking to increase treatment capacity um, in existing tankage. We generally can see a two to three time capacity increase by putting uh, biomag into an existing plant. Stringent, stringent nutrient limits without tertiary filtration. So this is another one, as you saw with, with the uh, earlier examples, is biomag is a great fit going into a plant where you're getting hit with new tight nutrient limits, uh, being able to use that tankage to, to incorporate your anoxic and, and uh, second anoxic type tanks for those systems. For, it, for plants that, um, that are they're either limited footprint or um, high cost of construction for new tanks, Biomag's a, a good fit for, for reducing costs for those upgrades and expansions um, without building a lot of new tanks. And then clarifier performance. This is what really allows us to manage those wet weather flows and by getting that faster settling, we're able to handle a lot higher peaks through the plant and manage those wet weather flows. And then finally, as you saw in the last example, Sergio showed to provide a further process stability. It allows you to take on things like septage, or if you have tough time nitrifying in the winter, it allows you to build up a little more mixed liquor where you can increase that process stability of a, an existing process. And with that, um, hopefully that gives a little idea of how we take that magnetite to allow you to settle like a rock and not a flock. And, <laughs> And with that, we'll uh, go ahead and open it up to the questions that are coming in online. Um, if there are any questions uh, beyond this presentation, feel free to uh, contact us directly for anything we, we didn't get to. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, I see we have a, a few questions uh, here popping up. Uh, the first one is, what is the dosage? The pursuance of magnetized dosage. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to address that, Casey? How much magnetite we need to add to a sure. plant? So for magnetite dosage and each plant, you know, we, we look at that as we go through the design process, but as a general rule of thumb for, for biomag, um, and it, some of it, it really depends on your wasting rate, but for a typical uh, plant, we're generally somewhere between 100 to 200 pounds per MGD of, uh, of flow coming to the plant. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, the other question is, what is the percentage of magnetite to be assessed? So I guess I can answer that. Uh, the simple way to put it is we look at the ratio of magnetite to biological mixed lipor of about 0.7 to 1. So per each pound of biological mixed lipor, we will add, you know, we'll have in the system about 0.7 to 1 pound of magnetite. Um, so let me see. More questions are coming up here. What is you? Uh, well, it's very fast. Just one second here. Got it. How how do you separate the polymer from the magnetite at the recovery? How do you separate the polymer from the magnetite? Well, really, I guess that it's more of the magnetite from the biological flock. Yeah, and that is what the shear mill does. What Case explains. So right, and whether you have polymer in the system or no polymer, you're still using that shear mill to separate the biological solids from. Right. Uh, that magnetite retain any latent magnetite properties after being uh, how can I explain that here? This recovered. Uh, there is no magnetic problem. I mean, really, fine particles they do not retain any magnetic field. Uh, we have had this question on magnetic flow meters. Is, is there any, any interference? The answer is no. Um, as I said before, we we handle very fine particles of magnetite that do not keep any magnetic field. Uh, do you offer on-site pilot test testing? I can take that one. So we've, in a lot of how Biomag was developed was exactly through um, demonstrations, I'd call it. Uh, generally, when we've um, demonstrated Biomag, we have, uh, our pilot system is actually a feed and recovery trailer. So the system we just went through, we have a trailer that houses a shear mill, a mag drum, a, the bag feeder you saw. And what we'll do is we'll look at the plant and come in and, and either demonstrate it on a portion of the plant or the whole plant, depending on the size of it. And that's been a pretty effective way for everybody to see what, what they'll really be getting before, before they go commit to a, mm -hmm. the full system. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing that less and less as we get more systems in, but uh, still something we're, we're capable of doing and, and do on a pretty routine basis. Good. Another question here, what kind of magnets are used? These are just rare earth, it's about two by two. Yep. Uh, Casey showed that array of magnets, so that is not uh, any... They're not electromagnets, electromagnets. They're, they're just rare earth magnets that uh, um, rated for you know a, a high pull force to get that magnetite out. And they, they don't degrade at all, I mean, right. they stay there forever pretty much. Um, what is it, those, we talk about this, uh, let's see here on top. Any abrasion properties that could affect negatively other equipment downstream? Do you want to touch base on that? So magnetite by itself, um, you know, if you're just pumping pure magnetite, we'll look at materials, but most of the process, that magnetite is embedded in the flock, and we have not seen the need to uh, change out impellers and different parts of equipment downstream in the process. That, that biological flock gives it a nice buffer within it, so it's not... Um, not abrasive as used in the process. And we can share a picture of uh, the impellers at the storage plant after, you know, seven years running. Um, again, it's, it's the ability of those fine particles to embed within those flocks. So you get buffered, if you will, by the biological uh, biopolymers protecting that. Um, another question here. Any concern with not recordable magnetite in the sludge that applies, as it applies to disposal? Well, certainly there is about 5% of the magnet that we cannot recover. Um, we have plants with centrifuge, uh, composting, incineration. We haven't received any negative feedback at all. Uh, on the contrary, I think that the, the watering aspect gets better as, as you know, that little uh, amount of magnet as, as a, as a uh, inert material helps with 
giving the uh, the watering you know more uh, more e efficient. Uh, apologies, I already asked, but how many facilities are currently operating in the U.S. with biomass? Currently operating. We have 26 plants total between operation, construction, and design. So I would say probably 13 or 15. Yeah, somewhere Thir around 15. We'd have to look at the running. exact number, but it's in that range. Different flow rate. Uh, the largest plant that right now is in design is an 18 MGD, and we have as small as 0.3 MGD. Uh, so very versatile way to to incorporate this, and as as we saw during the presentation, uh, a very minimalistic way to bring it to a plant on a side stream position. Um, any plants using biomic in Canada? We don't have any full scale plants operating in Canada at this point. We did um, several years back do a full scale biomag demo in um, Ontario. Uh, there's and papers presented at WebTech on that as well. And we do have uh, some other projects that are that are heading in that direction in Ontario right now, but nothing operating yet. Another question, can magnetite be recycled indefinitely as long as it's recovered? Yeah, it's a pretty good question. There is, um, you know, we recover most of that. And if you wanna calculate an SRT for magnetite must be in the hundreds of days probably. Um, but that's open, you know, good opportunities to investigate, and we're doing at Evoqua whether or not that magnetite, because of the long SRT, can serve as a, an enhancer for the biological process by maybe acting as a fixed media or helping with electron transfer of the process. So that's part of the R&D that we're doing. Right now, magnetite is just a, a, an inert material that helps us to increase settling rate. But one day we want to investigate whether or not we can even enhance the biological process. By again, that long SRT of magnetite in the biological system. Um, let me see here. Any specific to consider if biomag is being considered for upgrading and expanding an SBR? So, yeah, we have probably six plants with SBRs. Uh, any specific to consider? Uh, the most specific is just knowing the cycles, depending on the manufacturer of, of the SBR. Uh, Evoco has our own SBR, but you know we have done in, in somebody else's SBRs. So we need to understand those cycles and, and make sure that that both um, you know manufacturers, the SBR manufacturer and Evoco for the biomass side, have a, a collaborative you know approach to incorporate biomass. But the rest is, as, as we saw in the presentation, very simple to to bring it online and incorporate it. Uh, result could be could be any other problems because of the iron. Could that, no, with their, the iron's just an inert material. It's it's not reactive in the process, so um, it really is just an inert material in the process that, yeah. that won't create or have any impact on odors. Do you have to increase the ration capacity to compensate? Well, the ration is really depending on on the 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 load coming to the plant, right? So certainly, if you want to increase capacity in a treatment plant, you're bringing more BOD, ammonia that needs to be oxidized, your aeration, base, your, your aeration capacity has to be increased accordingly, right? So it's not because of magnetite that generates aeration demand. Typically, you know, in our projects, we see an increase in the blower capacity on the aeration system mainly because of the, the, the increased capacity that the plant is bringing. And generally that's enough for any extra mixing that, that may, may or be required because your, your flock's heavier now. Okay, do you have any plants with this technology in South America? The plants in the US, anyone is using with the goal of recovering? One second here. I can't get the, the, the question. Uh, well, I lost it here. Oh, here it is. Uh, the plants in the U.S. Uh, using with the goal of can recover the water. I'm not sure if I understand the question, but we don't have any any plants in South America at this point. Uh, but certainly there is an interest. Write us at biomac at evoqua dot com, and we can discuss. Uh, do you have uh, Do you have any metals? Okay. Do you have data on metals removal in active research process such as municipal wastewater metals removal? Do you want to address this on biomac? Um, that, I mean, we have metals where the plants that have metals limits, we we have data on that, but nothing specific to what Biomag does for metals removal. Right. Um, one of our other processes, the, the sister process of this, which is for chemical flocks, we are looking at a lot of metals removal, which is our Comag right. system. 
So the COMAC technology, um, as, as I said before, you know, magnets I can embed very well with either a biological flux for secondary treatment, but also with, with chemical flux for any chemical treatment you can imagine. So for heavy metal removal, we have been deeply involved uh, in piloting. We know there are pockets in the industry, in the market here that are facing those heavy metals removal um, limit. And, uh, but we address that strictly from a chemical treatment perspective, no with biology. Um, do you have any typical unit cost for biomass process like dollar per million gallons? Uh, it's hard to put it in that way, I would say, it depends on the, the, the size of the plant. Um, the best thing is just to run a concept design. Again, feel free to uh, contact us at biomacativoqua.com. We'll be glad to put uh, in a couple of days a concept design. And you can get a, a, a picture of how it looks like for your facility. Uh, we address the pilot. Yeah, that's Magneta. You address that one. Has Biomac ever been used with a dissolved air flotation unit rather than a secondary clarifier? Never. No, not at this, not at this time. I don't know. I want to try to float a ballast material. Yeah. Uh, kind of opposite what we want to do, right? Um, to do has to, Okay, the polymer, the demo. Uh, if you use 0.7 pounds per pound of Mexico, then actually increase on Clarify will be three, four times, considering you also increase Mexico by two times. If you use 0.7 pounds per pound of Mexico, then actually increase on Clarify will be three, four times, considering you also increase the Mexico by two. I think that's going to, are we looking at total Mexico or the equivalent Mexico? And so when, when we look at, at Biomag, um, and we do a lot of uh, what we call solids flux testing to, to determine what the settling characteristics are at a given site by adding magnetite. We do normalize out the magnetite. So um, when we're looking at a concept with you, you'll see what the true increase uh, is by having that magnetite in there, but equalized back out to an equivalent mixed liquor um, without magnetite. Okay. I hope I'm not missing any questions, guys, but uh, I'm doing my best. How do mixing requirements compare to a typical mixed liquid for an oxic zone mixing? So is the mixing requirement for an oxic zone? It'll be a little bit higher. It's something, it, some of that depends on the specific type of mixer you're using, and that's part of the evaluation we go mm -hmm, through mm -hmm. as, as we look at a, a design. Mm -hmm. Demo the inert. Is, uh, is magnetite harmful to other equipment? I think we we'll address that. Yeah. Uh, there is nothing there. Uh -huh. um, is recovery rate any higher in the COMAC process, any different than the Biomag? Well, I wish we had more time to, to cover COMAG. I think we want to have to do a webinar on COMAG. Um, but yes, the recovery rate is higher in COMAG just because we're dealing with a more a fragile, more uh, a chemical flux that just behaves differently than a sticky uh, biological flux. So, but again, I think uh, we want to owe you guys a, a webinar on COMAG, how we chemically treat uh, water or wastewater um, and add magnet as well. Let's see. Is the biomass quantity related to influent flow rate or the mixed liquid? Is the biomass quantity related to the influent rate or the mixed liquid? Well, it's really what we can recover. So the quantity that we add is what is not recovered in the, in, in the drums that depend on your WAS flow or quantity going to to the drum. And your your ratio of the 0 0.7 to 1, if, the, if you start up and the plant's not loaded as high as it was designed for, you start getting some settling benefit, you know, even as low as a 0 0.3 to 1 ratio of magnetite to solids. So mm -hmm. depending on where your plant's at and its design point, that ratio is something that can can be adjusted as you operate mm -hmm. the plant. Well, I have more questions, but uh, I think we're on time here. It's uh, 12.45 uh, Central Time. Um, so I think, uh, uh, it, again, if, if we couldn't address all the questions, I, I, first of all, I appreciate all the questions that everybody is, is, is submitting today. If we didn't have time to address your specific question, please, uh, send us an email to biomac at evoqua.com. Casey and I will be more than happy to uh, go over this again, address your question, have a conference call, and certainly, you know, discuss any potential uh, application that you may have.
And with that, again, thank you very much for attending this webinar. We hope it was informative enough for everybody. And as we said, set it like a rock, not like a flock. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.